Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to paint a snowy background that is so easy. I'm going to show you the easiest technique and no, it is not splattering white paint, making a mess everywhere. Not to say that we won't use some, but that's not the technique we're going to use today to get the background with to look like there's snow falling. Um, this is one of the cards that I made this year for Christmas. I like to give cards. I started a poll before we began to see, and the majority of you um, don't. I asked, do you like to make gifts or cards to give around the holidays? And right now we're at 50-50. So we're at 50-50 right now with people who do or don't. Uh, these are two other examples. You see this one was a little lighter than that one. Doesn't matter. Um, we're going to learn exactly how to do this technique. Again, this is super simple. Uh, so we're going to dive in. I only have three cards left that I have to do before Christmas. And I had shared this, this one right here. I had shared that one. And I got a lot of comments and I got a lot of um, comments about the snow in the background. And I thought, you know what? Let's do it because I've painted a few more of those. I'm going to do it again. And uh, yeah, they're super easy. And if you stick with me, in addition to the, um, the background, I'll show you how I do the snow on my trees. Um, I've had quite a few comments about that. And <clears throat> they're really easy. They might look difficult. They might be intimidating. They were very intimidating to me. In fact, if you are a patron or a member of the channel and you're on the Discord server, I shared like the progression over the last decade of my snow covered trees. <clears throat> they have really evolved quite a ways, <laughs> quite a ways. So yeah, if you are uh, a member and you haven't seen that yet, it's, it's in the general channel over on discord. So I encourage you to pop by, have a peek, and hopefully that will encourage you that you can do this too because they've come a long way, my friends, they've come a long way. Uh, so let's talk about supplies. If you're going to be using all the supplies are listed in the description below, but if you want to follow along and give this one a try, have a tissue or a cotton bud Q-tip handy. And for the tissue, you see, I've just taken it and brought it to a point and kind of spun that around and like blunted the end. So here we go. Yeah. Starving Artist Collector says, I do love watching all the recent live streams uh, paint snow while I'm burning up here because it's like 97 degrees Fahrenheit where she is in Australia because when we're winter, she of course is uh, in her summer season enjoying the beach. So all of you who are not snow lovers can be jealous of that. Of course, when we're enjoying our summer and she's going through her winter, yeah, it might be a different story. Um, but anyhow, so today I'm working on some Strathmore watercolor cards and these I've already, I've stamped my sentiment on the inside and I like to sign my cards on the back, on the bottom center. And then um, I'm gonna paint my scenes on the front here. So the only thing about stamping them ahead of time I stamped these and then I didn't think, wait a minute, is the orientation going to be like this or like this? And now of course it has to be like this because of the way I signed them and stamped them, but that's fine. Hi D Lynn. Hi George. Thank you everybody for joining me. Um, okay. If you're excited about learning this technique, this is so simple. Anybody can do this. I, even if you're the, the newest beginner to watercolor, I assure you, you can do this. This is going to be super simple. So stick with me. And if you're enjoying it or if you're excited to learn that, uh, hit that like button because it definitely helps us. That is one of the best ways you can support the channel. Um, and it gets our video out there to more uh, viewers. And thank you so much for all who have hit the like button already. Okay. 
The other thing that I am going to do, because I can show you again, that is like a cellulose paper. Hi, Cindy. So that is a uh, cellulose paper, but I also have my meat in 100% cotton paper. So I can show you that it, it, you can do it on cotton or cellulose. This should work on both. Um, I am using, let me just kind of set that aside till I need it. I've got to clean up the studio. <clears throat> I will also be using my set of 48, the Ganzai Tambi paints. If you don't have these paints already, I'm going to be using them a bit more, I think, in the, um, in the coming months. You're going to see those, you're going to see those pop up a, a bit more. Jackson's now carries them open stock. So if you use one up, you can get it replaced through Jackson's. And uh, Cindy says, I have them, love them. Yeah, I'm really enjoying them too because they can be like opaque and, or you can really dilute and get a nice transparent wa transparent washes with them. So I'm really enjoying these paints. Uh, I do have my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White because we're going to be doing the snow on the tree with that. Let me bring you to the desk. I will pop up in the corner, boop, right over there, here. Hi. <laughs> okay. So I have, I have my mimic brushes out today and I, I've, I've been using, and they are, you'll see them back there over my shoulder, my Nick Pro brushes. I have to reach out to Nick Pro. So you guys aren't going to see me using them until I hear back from Nick Pro because I told you guys that. I really liked those brushes and you know, I've been using them for like the past, what month and a half here on the channel, if not two months and all of the brushes that I've been using the most. So my six round, my seven round, my eight, um, what is it? The 10, all of those ferrules here are loosening up on the brushes and they're getting wiggly. If that's going to happen to you over time with lots of use, and I mean, I'm painting in the studio multiple times a week, if not one, at least once a day. But if that's going to happen to you over time, I can't recommend those brushes as a good um, affordable alternative because are they then affordable once that gets all loose? And I don't know about you, but I can't stand to paint with a brush that has a loose ferrule. Can you drop some glue in there and make them? I don't know. I have to take him down to Lou's shop and see if he can. He has some really thin CA glue. See if he can lock those down. But I need to reach out to uh, Nick Pro about that because that should not be happening. I'm not abusing my brushes. Um, my brushes always stay flat to dry or they're like this hooked on my paint puck. Um, yeah, that shouldn't be happening. So until further notice, I won't be recommending those brushes because that has happened to more than one of mine. One, if it was just like a one-off, I would have been like, okay, maybe. But every single brush that I use most often, it is happening with. And I don't think that's acceptable. So that's why you're seeing me use my um, Mimic brushes. I'm hoping in the beginning of the year, I will receive a... Um, a set of the meat in brushes. I want to give those a try because those are quite affordable. I've heard good things about them, but I have not tried them yet. So I can't tell you one way or the other, but they're on my Christmas wish list. In fact, I left a link in the description below to meet in and meet in has given us a code, which is Clark with a capital C Clark 10, uh, the number 10. It's in the description. It's in the description below. So if you scroll down to supplies used in this video, you'll see it there. And just below that, I linked to you guys a set that has a set of watercolor paints, the brushes I'm talking about, some of the meat and paper, and a dual well, like rinse well. And then I linked a wonderful uh, ceramic palette that would be great to go with that set because it holds, it has enough wells for all the colors that are in that set of watercolors and you can mix in the lid. So I thought that would be a great option for somebody who maybe wanted to 
try watercolor that hasn't tried it yet and doesn't have any watercolor supplies. I can't, I've heard other YouTubers like um, Lindsay over at the Frugal Crafter channel. I know she's tried them and had good things to say about them. Diane Anton, who works with Meaden a lot, she has had good things to say about the paint. I haven't tried it personally, so I can't say, but that's on my Christmas wish list. And if I don't get it by Christmas, come January 1st, I will be ordering that set so that we can have a look at it. So you will see that. You'll see that to come. Now, let's talk about doing this background. You're going to need a spray bottle. Uh, George says, is that a snow kitty behind you? Um, I'm, if, I'm not sure where. I'm like looking. I'm leaned and I don't see. I don't think. So. Oh, this. If you're talking about when I was. Hold on. When I was here. This is a snowman and it is like, yeah, it's just a snowman. If you're talking about this, which I love snowmen, so all things snowmen, but that's a snowman. I've got my reindeer, my reindeer ears on today. Oh, this was another one that I did the same tech. It's not going back up there the same way. <laughs> I did that same technique uh, in the snow, um, in the ornament and I painted the tree inside. That was a fun one not the bonus card that I was talking about we would do at the end, but if we don't get going, we're not going to have time for it. So I'm going back, back down to the desk. Okay. If you have, now not all of these fine misters are created equal. <clears throat> oh, you're welcome. Yeah. It's a snowman. I have this one and by not created equal, I don't mean that one is worse than the other. And this is a perfect example. So with this one, if I spray, and actually I'm going to come back one more time so you can really see this. If I pull this trigger, so watch when I pull and watch when the water stops. If I pull the trigger, I'm kind of going to go over my shoulder here. It won't reach that stuff. It's safe. Um, you see how that, it keeps going. We don't want that. If that is what your mister does, it is not going to work for this technique. You need a bottle. If we see this one. And it's wonderful that the tops are different, so I can always tell them apart. When I do this one, I stop, it stops. That's what we want. And this one kind of gives me um, a variety of droplet sizes. So I like it. But if you're a patron of mine, uh, if I've ever sent you one of these little guys, perfect, you could use that. And this is just a um, fine mister. And it just does quick little spritz. But it's all going to be in how we spray. You're going to see me use this one today. This is my favorite just because it fits nicely in my hand. I got it at the supermarket. I got it at my local Shaw's for all of you New Englanders. Um, Shaw's. And it just does quick. When I let go, it lets go. It gives me a little bit of a variety in the droplet size, but it's not overpowering. I can just give a little quick spritz and it'll do. Okay. So we need one of those. Also a tissue or a Q-tip or cotton bud, whatever, whichever you um, call them, <clears throat> depending on where you are in the world. All right. So the way that we do this, uh, this is from my Kuretake paint. Uh, this is the Blue Gray Deep. If you don't have the Kuretake paints, if you don't have Blue Gray Deep, uh, Let's see, if I was using Daniel Smith, I would use probably Thalo or Ultramarine Blue and maybe, um, you know, one of the blacks. Uh, I'd probably use, I'm trying to think, I might use Moogle, Neutral Tint. You could use Neutral Tint, but if I uh, use Neutral Tint, I would put a little bit more either Thalo Blue or Ultramarine Blue into it. Uh, I would pick Lunar Black just because I like Lunar Black. That's PBK 11, but you could use PBK 7, um, one that doesn't granulate. That would be fine too, because we're just, we're doing the background. If there's a little bit of granulation, it's just going to help it along, but it doesn't have to be. So if you have some nice, beautiful, transparent colors, 
um, that is like a phthalo blue. Ultramarine is going to granulate a little bit. Phthalo blue will not. You can use, like with Daniel Smith, a phthalo blue green shade or red shade. Just phthalo blue. 15, what is it? 15 colon 3. You can use that. And I'm talking about the pigment numbers if you know your pigments. Um, so yeah. But today I'm going to be using the Blue Gray Deep, which is kind of like a neutral tint that leans more blue. Uh, there's also, I have Indigo and yeah, either, either, either should be fine. So I'm starting with a number 12 round because I want to get a really nice wet surface here. And I'm going to try to zoom. Let me zoom you in on this a little bit more. So bear with me for just a moment. I just want to make sure that you guys have a better view. I'm sorry if that bothers you guys with it moving. I just want to make sure that you have a better view of what's happening on the actual paper. If I don't know if you need to see, I'm going to move the Dr. PH Martin's blue proof white. We'll cover all that after. Okay. So there we are. This is just what I use like a bone tool. I use when I fold my cards, it's been on my desk because that's what I've been doing lately. So with some clean water, this works up so fast. It is super easy. Uh, if anybody's following along with me, this is definitely a quick project. Okay. I am going to start by just, you can either do it vignette. I'm going to do it vignette. So I'm not going to go all the way to the outside edges of my paper. You can either do a vignette or you can go to the outside edges. It doesn't matter. It will work either way. So don't worry about that. We're just going to wet our surface. Now, if you have a bigger brush or if you like to wet your surface with a flat, that's fine too, or a mop or a quill, whatever you like. And I am going to bring this down. So you see, I'm really getting this nice and wet. I'm trying to remember as I need to see, I might tip it just a bit because I want to make sure that all of it is wet. This is important. We have to work wet and wet for this. So I'm just making sure that I have a nice wet surface. I haven't left any parts out. Again, this is the Strathmore watercolor card that I'm using. Uh, it is a, you know, like wood pulp or cellulose type paper. They're okay. I don't hate them. It's not my favorite paper to work on, but when I'm making cards, you know. All right, so that is plenty wet. I'm still gonna use my um, 12 round for the next step. Now this is wet. If I can get that, you see how glossy that is. Okay. The whole thing is wet. We're going to come into, again, this is deep gray blue. These paints re-wet so beautifully. All right. We're just going to start at the top and see that is really dark. If I don't want it to be this dark at this point, I would just rinse my brush out. And I forgot to put like up my, you can see my towel there for a second because I forgot and just tapping my brush off. And now I'm going to come through again. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to tip it just a little bit so I can see where my wet edges are because you see it wanting to travel there and you see how we're getting lighter as we come down, which is fine because we're going to come down when I get right near the bottom. I'm actually just going to give a couple pulls through and leave some of that white space because that's going to be my snow at the bottom. Okay. So just like that, I shouldn't even even come back and touch it. Once you like, once you do, just let it be. I know it's always harder. I say that. And then I like try to go back and fiddle with stuff. All right. That is all we are going to be using our 12 round for. I have a size six round here and I'm going to be doing everything else with that. If that's too big for you and you prefer a smaller brush when we get there, you could even use a four. Okay, so you see how wet and glossy that looks. We want to let this set for just a minute or so longer. So I'm going to hold this up so that you can see that glare because that is very important. Seeing, to judge your time, like 
you want to see how the sheen is on your paper and that's going to tell you when we can go now at the top it's going to start to get duller you see how that's starting i touched it you see how that's starting to dull at the top just in the, it's working its way down that's what we want and i'm sure i touched my finger there too um, i know i i know i did because otherwise it wouldn't look like that so much i'm just going to give a little just to even that out which i may mess this up a little bit because i did that but it's fine you're going to get the point you're going to see it happen we'll do it again i will do this again so no worries and i promise not to mess it up next time but i wanted you to see that sheen so now i am going to stand or hold back like you see the edges it's getting dull around my edges this is the time i need to go i am holding this about a foot off this is about 12 inches off the surface of my desk and i am off the edge of my desk so the work that is here my desk is about three more inches and i'm holding back there because i want one spritz to come out and fall down on my paper and you see all the dots that are starting wait don't don't do it again you have to wait in the watch if you get a spot where maybe a larger water droplet hit and you didn't like that you can take your q-tip and just touch very gently in the center it'll pull some of that water away so like if i do this it'll pull some of that away or you can take your tissue and just dab if you got ones that have too much now i've got these ones but they're not so much in here so i'm just going to give another quick little spritz and you'll you'll see up here how quickly my finger is on and off that trigger right and I was going to say I kind of missed my paper, but I didn't because see, I'm seeing more action happening here. Don't be like, oh, I'm not seeing anything and dive right back in because it'll be too much and you won't like it. It's just one or two quick spritzes. That's it. That is all you need for this technique. And again here, see, I've got like, I can see a big water spot here. So I'm just going to touch the center. Now, another thing that you can do is either with your Q-tip or your um, Kleenex, you can just touch a few other spots. It's just gonna pull up some color, but it's not going to, like these, the water will actually push out the color. And you see, it actually gives you like some almost snowflake shapes. Now, if it's spreading and it's continuing and, and you're like, this is gonna go too far. I don't want it to be that much. I've said before, when you use your heat tool or your hair dryer, I have a heat tool here, but I used to use a hair dryer all the time. I'm going to just put this on low and I'm going to go over this and it is going to freeze my paint right where it's at. It's not going to let it continue to spread. So we're just going to hit that real quick. And I love when I do this, hopefully you guys can hear me just fine, even with this going. I really do need to email Ecamm and be like, can we get a noise canceller for our microphones in the program? With these cards, when you dry them like this, they really do go back flat, pretty nice. And you notice I didn't tape this down. You saw I got it quite wet. They flatten right back out. So that's all I need. Look at that. We are going to do this again. So, and look at all that snow that's falling. I'm not worried about this. I'm going to paint my tree right over that. So I'm not worried about it. And a couple bigger snowflakes. I'm not worried about that either, because if you live in snow country, you know that sometimes you have these great big flakes falling that could be like the size of quarters and other times they're not so big. Um, you also might see me use today. I've got, um, I meant to put it out ahead of time. I have a sponge and it's just like a regular kitchen sponge. But I like to use that to dab my excess water off my brush so that I don't flood my painting with too much. And yeah, you can use any kitchen sponge um, just in an effort to use fewer paper towels here in the studio. Um, I grab that and of course I have an old rag and I use that sometimes too. You can use anything. Old t-shirt. If there's a t-shirt you have that has a hole in it and cut it up and make some studio rags and you can use that. T-shirts are very absorbent. 
All right, so uh, now I'm gonna do the tree real quick. This, I just, same, I'm just gonna do monochromatic. You could switch, you could grab like a sap green right now if you wanted to um, and use that or like a sap green with a little bit of neutral tint or uh, just the tiniest bit of black just to kind of tone that down, make it a little darker. You could do that. I'm doing it monochromatic. Um, the only color other than white that I'm going to use today is the blue gray deep and just to make things simpler. All right. So how do I do my tree? This is really easy. Ready? I'm going to want my tree to stop about here. So I'm going to start with a line to about there. That's where I want my tree. At the top, and I'm doing a snow covered tree. If a tree is covered in snow, it is really heavy. <laughs> George says the tree lady show. I didn't realize how many trees I painted until George made a comment in one of Joseph's streams. If you guys aren't familiar with what I'm talking about, uh, Joseph, the art of Joseph Fincham, who's one of our moderators, he live streams every Monday and I help mod over on his channel. We kind of help each other out. And so, uh, yeah, his link is in the description below. Uh, Tara, uh, one of our other mods, she had an event with one of her children tonight. So she may be running a bit late if she arrives. And uh, she also has a channel. Both of theirs are linked in the description below. So I do encourage you to check them out. And this is where I have to put my glasses on because I'm going to get more detailed. Okay. But I didn't realize until George made a comment over on Joseph's stream that... Uh, asked if he had to pay me licensing for painting a tree. And I was like, do I really paint that many trees? Uh, it's one of my favorite things to paint. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, but yeah. So then I'm going to start making these come downward. Don't overthink this part. This is what gets so many people. And it got, I know it got me um, trying to figure out, you know, how, how do I do these trees? It's really simple, right? We just, I, that was just a little bit of line. I kind of let my brush skip around and I do some lines uh, and I don't have enough water in my brush. Okay. So there we have like a downward V, but I don't want it to look like a bunch of V's stacked on top of each other. I also need branches that come towards me. So that's the ones that I pull downward. And that was a lot of water, a lot of paint that just popped in there. You're going to see me just kind of touch that and use it to bring down to other places. Don't worry about making a mess here. We're going to be painting with the white and that's really where the magic happens. If I have some areas that show through, that's fine too. I'm just using that pool of paint that I left there. I let each one come out just a little bit further and I just kind of dab, just dab downward. I want this to be really darker in the center because even trees that are heavily snow flocked, you can see kind of inside parts of them. And that is what we are going for. Okay, I just want to make sure, see, I'm just pulling down, tapping, having that tree shape in mind, right? It's just a triangle. There we go. Tree. Done. And hopefully you're not sitting there going, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> and then I do mine and they look like, what did Tara say a week or so ago? It looked like candy floss. So cotton candy to us. <laughs> Carrot trees looked like candy floss on a stick. And I just thought that was, I just thought that was funny. Uh, this is a little uh, lighter blue than I want. So I'm just going to tap in a little extra for the dark right there. So you see, nice, dark. That's why I was saying it doesn't matter. You can use sap green, add a little black. You could even just use black. It would be fine. Um, I like using the blue or the green only because as some of that pulls through on our white paint, it is going to show up. <clears throat> because this is a card, 
let me just share with you. I have these linked below. Now you can get a single or a three pack. This is the clear one. The Wink of Stella 2 brush. And this brush puts a sparkle on your cards that is unlike putting down glue and sprinkling on glitter and then the glitter gets everywhere and the glitter comes off the card and it spreads. And let me just double check because I have one. I'm knocking things down everywhere. So I have one here. See that right there. See that sparkle? Look at that. That is what you get with this Wink of Stella brush. And if I rub over that, uh, very tiny bit, but hardly any is coming off on my finger. So yeah, not like when you glue and sprinkle glitter and that stuff wants to go everywhere and spread and it's a mess. But this is the point where I put this on. I will do, and I don't know if I hold it at an angle, if you guys will, yeah, right there where that's nice and wet, you might be able to see. <clears throat> so for my light snow, I just, and this is just like a, like a paintbrush. When they come, they have in between where the brush part screws onto the handle, there's like a black ring. You unscrew it, remove that ring, and then screw it back together. And that's what pierces um, the ink. And yeah, it's just like, it has like mica. I think it's got to be like a fine mica in it. And look at lots of sparkle. And I like to go over at this point, some of my snowflakes so that I can add sparkle to those. Now, of course, if you're just doing this as a regular painting and you don't want sparkly snow, you know what I mean? You don't want your snow to have a shimmer. You could even, you could add shimmer even in a regular painting. It would be fine, it would be different. Um, definitely stylized. So I tend to tip it so I can see uh, if this card were looked at from the side. You know, is it kind of spaced out? Do I have shimmer evenly spaced around on that card? And I definitely like to get some of the snow here. If I, I just touch the tree, it will pick up that dark color. So I don't want that. And if you did, all you'd have to do is like wipe it off on something and it, it clears right up. Because trust me, I've used this over quite, quite a bit. But see, there it is, just a little bit of shimmer. And as that dries, the wetness will go away and all you're left with is the sparkle. So I definitely recommend these. You can get them just the clear ones or like I have, I have one that is silver, one that is gold and one that is clear. <clears throat> that is the set that I got. And you just listen you know it's closed and they don't dry out. So those are linked below. Now this tree needs to finish drying. I'm just gonna hit that with the um, heat tool. Oh, thanks, Starving Artist Collective says, I just noticed your nail designs. Uh, show us all of them. So I have got little bows on my pinkies and then those are little penguins with Santa hats. If I can get, it's like not wanting to focus. There we go. And then I have little, little gnomes, uh, rain gear with Santa hats and Christmas ornaments. Yep. Those are my designs. I just found those. I love it. I love, I'm loving them. They're so easy. Let me just hit this and dry it real fast. Please let me know in the comments if that is really loud because it is only about 18 inches from my microphone. And if it's too loud, I can mute when I do that, so. There we go. And that should be dry enough. Like when I look at that, um, I'm still seeing a little bit of shine, but I think it's fine. And remember, I've told you guys before, when you're using Dr. Page Martins, and that's what we're using next, and then we're gonna do this one more time. This is really easy because this has to dry in between. So when you're using Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white, 
if this is wet at all, it will bleed through. It is only bleed proof when your base layer is nice and dry. So, and this here, you see this, this is dry. So that is some that I was using the other day. And this is just a little, um, it's actually an ink palette. And you see it has like a rest that you'd put like your, like a fountain pen or something here and you could dip whatever. They call it an ink palette. But yeah, that's dry. I'm just going to add some more in there and a little spritz of water. So just going to give that a little, just a little spritz and grab some more. And we're going to mix that up. And this will uh, re-wet very easily. So if you're noticing that your Dr. Page Martins is a little dry, don't be afraid to give it a little bit of water because I let mine dry right out on this palette and reactivate it all the time. And it works just fine. All right, I'm going to need a little bit more than that. There we go. So again, I am using my number six round. This is my mimic brush. It comes to a great point. Uh, if this brush is a little too big and intimidating for you to do this with, by all means, you could grab um, something like a size four round or even go down to a size two. Whatever you are most comfortable with for this step, um, just use what you have. So now when snow sits on trees, it is when it's usually when it's accumulating on the trees, it is like heavy wet snow. So that's how we are going to paint it. I'm going to just come in now and dab along my branches. I focused on one side of the top. Right, it would kind of collect in that little V. Now, when I go, I'm painting above the branch. So where I painted the branch, I am putting this, if I can see a little better. I am putting this, let's see if I can make sure I keep my hand out of the way so you can see it, right along this top edge, right? And I just kind of follow that down. Don't worry about being too precious with this part because you're going to see, can you guys see it? Yeah, you can see that. Okay. I'm going to come along, catch the tops. Now, remember I said, we don't want to do these. Like we don't want to just do upside down V's. We have areas coming towards us, right? Sometimes we're looking straight at the branch and all we see is that. And that was just a blob with a skinny little tail going up towards the center of the tree. All right, I'm going to put this on. So I'm just going to quickly come down over these areas. Hopefully showing you not blocking the view. The other thing, try not to do. I did that in some of mine. I, I staggered my rows. I did not like that when it was done because my brain just, your brain wants to make patterns. Don't make patterns. And one of the ways you can avoid that is like, just come all the way down one side of your tree. Right. Come all the way down one side. Don't bring it too far up. Don't worry about reaching the middle, right? So if I come down one side of my tree, then, oh, here I need one that I'm looking at in the center. I can now start to build my tree, right? Perhaps there's another, I'll stagger some that are coming at me. pulling some of these down. See how now I'm not getting necessarily rows. Again, I can finish this side, pull that back. And now I see I'm going to need some here, some here. I still ended up with a little bit of what I'm seeing as patterns on this one, but it's fine. All right. Now, when I let this dry, 
you're going to see that some of this area, because mine was not completely, it wasn't cured. It was not dry all the way through. So you're going to see some of that color bleed through and that white is going to get darker. This is going to make my shadow colors. Okay. So let it be, don't worry about it. Just let this dry. And I can already show you what I'm talking about, because if you see in here, you're seeing that white getting darker, right? And up in here, that white is darker. That blue that's underneath is leaching into my white and I'm getting a very light blue and that's fine. If you look at your trees, some of your snow is going to have shadows. It's going to look bluish color or like a blue gray and other areas are going to look bright white. It may even look like a yellow white because it's daytime and the sun's catching that. So we just let this dry on its own. So let me put that one aside. <clears throat> and we're just going to let that dry and we will come back to it. So I'll move this out of the way. Now, I told you I'd show you that example again. Uh, the white paint, George, is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. This is the best. I love this white. You can use alternatives. If you have white gouache, you can use that. It will work very similarly. Um, so whatever gouache you like. But if you don't have gouache and you don't have anything like that and you're getting something just for doing these kind of effects, I definitely recommend Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. I have had this jar for a couple years. It is worth the money. And you see... I am, oh, I'm, I'm about, it's hard to see that because it's so white. Yeah, I'm about two thirds of the way down that jar. And I love it. I love that I can reactivate it. So if I put some, you know, in a palette like this, uh, yeah, we're getting so much glare from my overhead light. Not a problem at all. I'm like the lights that I have around my table are not so bad, but this, the overhead light that's like up in the center of the room, because we're hitting that time at between 3.30 and 4, that's becoming dusk because it's already getting almost dark. Oh, hi, Jacqueline. I'm glad you're here and said hi. <clears throat> yeah, that, Dylan, that is a, uh, they, they called it an ink. Uh, an ink palette. I'll see if I can find one and link it, but all right. I'm like, where did I put my medium paper? Right here. Let's try this technique on some of our cotton paper. Now I'm just going to do this on half because again, if we look at the size of this block, this is the uh, 10 by oops it's 10 by 7 inches or uh if you're looking at millimeters there's your size right there okay so 20 sheets 300 gsm this is 100 percent cotton and there it's pretty close my strathmore watercolor cards are only slightly we're so zoomed in only slightly smaller than this because it's like 10.2 or 5 point whatever but yeah, it's fine. So I'm just going to paint this on the bottom half because I could then remove this from the block, fold it in half, and now I have a card. I love this size block. I love it. So I'm just going to put a piece of masking kind of down the center. I'm going to just eyeball it. And it is what it is. And this is just, I'm still going to paint it like a vignette. So it's kind of just as a guide to make sure I stay you know, kind of stay within my, stay within my side. And this, oh my goodness, I painted a card and I decided I was going to use, I wanted like a moon. I did like Santa flying in front of the moon. And I set this roll of tape down to mask out my spot. I literally just used my roll of masking, set it down, wet everything around it, painted everything around it for the background. And then once I was done, I lifted it and I had my moon didn't have to tape a circle. I just pressed a circle, um, but it definitely wicked up on my tape, but it hasn't affected my ability to use the tape once it dried. So, you know, it's all good, but yeah, that's what I did. In case you're wondering why, why do I have paint all over my tape? All right. Are you ready? We're going to do this one more time this time, hopefully without me messing up by putting my fingers in it. So really easy. We are just going to, let me get my clean water. We are going to 
lay down an area. So again, I'm working in a vignette, so I'm not going all the way to the edges, but you could if you wanted to. I'm just gonna tip, you guys can't even really see that water. There we go, now you can see it. If you can see it, I can look up and see it, so that will be fine. Because oddly enough, I have learned how to paint by watching my monitor. Yeah, there we go. All right. So if I don't get all the way to the edge of my vignette, it's fine. I'm gonna get a nice soft edge. So this is cotton paper. It wants to absorb that quickly. So you see, here's a perfect example of what I was talking about with the sheen. See how right here is starting to get dull? Right? See how that's starting to get duller? This is still really wet and glossy and reflective. That's getting a little dull. Your edges are going to get like that first. Once I put my paint down, when the top edge starts getting like that, and then this is not as shiny, that's I know I'm ready for my water. Okay? And we want a nice low spritz. Yeah. Um... Art of Joseph Fincham said that like orange peel, like you can see it, see the texture, but it's not just that it's looking at how, sh how shiny, how wet, uh, cause it'll look very like, see how that's very glossy. There's no water pooling anywhere and it's very glossy. But if you look over here on the edge, see how that looks a little bit more matte and that looks glossy cause I didn't touch my water to out here. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about. That is what I would call a matte. And this is very, very glossy. It's super reflective, but no water's pooling. I hope that helps because that was one of the things that I had a time with when I was learning watercolor was like, when is it wet? And, and when can I put my paint on there? All right. So now you can see that I'm going to put in some of this and this might be dark again. Yeah, it is. So if I put this down and it's dark, I'm just going to rinse my brush out. Look at how that, oh, look at how that is spreading on the cotton paper. I'm like, I'm supposed to be painting this, but can we just take a moment to appreciate the spreading paint? I love these paints. And that you notice that that did not do that on the, um, it didn't do that on the cards. So if you don't appreciate that, then those Strathmore watercolor cards. Now see, I'm because see how it's doing that again? I don't want that to the bottom. I need to rinse my brush again to make sure I have all the paint out. You see, I'm just tapping it on my sponge there to get any excess water. And now I'm just going to come back, right? Pull that up, tap my brush off, get any excess off. And at the bottom, it doesn't matter if I have a few lines pulled through. If this is moving, because this is cotton paper and it's so wonderful with it moving and giving me these beautiful soft edges. If I have too much and I want this to be lightened up some, right? I can tap my brush off on a sponge or my rag and I can pull back, tap my brush, pull back, tap my brush. And all I'm doing is lifting some of that color because this is wet. It's still going to come forward and give me a nice soft blend. Right now, you see the sheen? It's not that super shiny. Okay. It is not the super shiny, but it is uh, it's starting to go matte. This is when we want to spritz our water. Okay, here we go. Ready? And so I'm holding about a foot above my paper and about six to eight inches back from where my paper is. Cause I want to, I want this to spray out and fall down. Okay. So quick spritz, you see it immediately start to see it happening. I'm going to wait a moment to see, is this going to develop as much as I want? I might need to give another spritz. So here I'm just going to do one more and look at that. All of our snow is starting to fall in the background. 
Now this is going to continue. These water drops will continue to push out. I'm gonna let you watch this for a moment or two while I check in with the chat and you can see how our snowflakes might get a little bit bigger as we go. So we can do this on cotton paper or we can do this on cellulose paper. It works on both. And this is the simplest technique for getting falling snow in your backgrounds. Now, if uh, you try this with a color that doesn't, and it, and it, it doesn't work, try a different color. It's probably your pigment. It's not moving. If you try this on a paper that is not watercolor paper, it may not have the sizing in it to let your colors flow on the surface and it may not work. You need watercolor paper. If you try this and you did not pre-wet your paper, it is not going to necessarily work because you have to work this wet in wet. So wet in wet, I wet my paper first, then I put my color on, let that sheen get down to a nice, uh, almost matte, uh, just just less than kind of satin. Let's go with satin. It's in between matte and in between and shiny, right? So it's like a nice satin sheen. That's when we spritz. And you notice I don't have a lot over here, and I'm not worried about that too much because I'm gonna put my tree in there. But now that I'm looking at this, if I needed a little bit more, I could. And see, there's a big one. This is what I was telling you. Too big of a drop got on there. I can just kind of come in and touch that. It's it's gonna bloom. That's gonna bloom like crazy and it's fine. It's just one of those things that you're either, you're really happy with it or, you know, so now if I didn't, if I didn't like this, what could I do? If I said that just ruined my painting, what could I do? Let this dry, wet it again, do the same process all over again. Okay. So, ah, uh, Look at that. We have Rob, we have gifted memberships coming through from Rob. Oh, Merry Christmas, Rob. Okay. So we have, look, who has received a membership from Rob? Rob gifted 20 memberships. Thank you, Rob. On behalf of everybody in the chat that may get one of these. Thank you. Uh, Dylan Creative Arts was gifted a membership. Joseph Fincham was gifted a membership. Uh, Don Dini. Suzanne Stack, Simone Mack. Um, it could be the moon. Dylan says that could be the moon. Yes, it could. it could. Or you could do it like it's a big star, right? Like the Christmas star. It's fine. Maybe we'll do that as the Christmas star. Maybe I'll kind of shift my tree just under that one and we'll make that be the Christmas star above the tree. We'll just kind of, we'll go with it, right? Just go with it. Okay. Uh, Nana B was gifted a membership by Rob. Teresa Brown, uh, horsewoman Bailey uh, so many new people. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad to see you all here uh, Jamie C's was gifted a membership Mo was gifted a membership once upon a time Mopolini 66 Kelly L. Thank you so much Rob if um If you do not already have one or if you're unsure how to get one if you see Rob's little, uh, the icon that shows his, tell me what that is again. It's a bird of prey, uh, is his little, his little icon. And it shows a gift in the number 20. Click on that. You just have to say that you want to accept gifted memberships for this channel and you can get them. You don't have to have any card, no payment, nothing like that is required of you. You just get a gifted membership for a month and at the end of the month it goes away. My nose is wanting to run. Sorry, guys. Yeah. So George, if you're, um, you're always here, George, you should be, you should get one of them. Just click on, click on that link. And you may have to, like I said, you may have to go to memberships or you may have to click on join and say to allow gifted memberships for this channel. And it's specific to each channel. Um, it's not YouTube wide. Um, so yeah. If you do that, you might be able to grab one as well. Okay. This is pretty much, I mean, it's dry enough that I can do my tree. It's still damp because it is the cotton paper and it will hold the moisture longer. Which I love cotton paper, but we're going to switch over and see the star. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. We're going to do that as the Christmas star. This, this one is getting a Christmas star. Okay. <clears throat> Going back to my number six round, and again, just working monochromatic. 
Let's do another one of these trees. Again, these can be so easy. I want my tree to start about here. Um, and I want it to stop about here. So I'm just going to take, and this may bleed and fuzz out because this paper is still wet and that's okay. We're not going to mind. It's just going to automatically put branches for me that, you know, little, little needles, like you see how it's spreading. It's going to make pine needles all on its own. I don't even have to uh, put in much effort for this. So I'm just going to work with some little lines. There are a couple usually at the, at least on mine here, I have um, like spruce trees, which have the, the smaller, softer needles. They're not like a white pine that has the really long pine needles. And they, they're like what you would typically like a typical Christmas tree, a spruce or a, a fir, or a Douglas or a Fraser. I think a Fraser fir is my favorite. And see, that looks kind of weird. It looks like I have this wonky palm tree going on right now, but never fear. All right, don't let it intimidate you. Oh my gosh, I think, what time is it? Yeah, it's been a half an hour. Lou was making me a prime rib tonight for dinner and he must have just put it in the oven because I can start to smell it up here. There we go. Thank you so much, Rob. That was so nice. And what does that get you? For those of you who just got a super fan membership and you're going, what does it get me? I don't even know. What's a super fan? Uh, so we have the memberships now on the channel. You can become a super fan for just $2.99 a month. I try to remember every single week, which can be a bit of work for me, but it's worth it because we like have to have fun with it. All of you who are super fans now, you can have a snowball fight in the, in the chat because this week I did all new, uh, emojis. So when you click on the little emoji on the right side of your chat window, you're going to see emotes that are specific. There we go. Dylan started snowball fight. The snowman is winding up and splat. I don't know who she got, but it's somebody was hit. Um, but you have different emotes. Don't let her play all by herself. Somebody else throw one back. <laughs> um, so anyways, yeah, I don't know why starving can never seem to get them. And the only thing I know that's different is she's one from Australia, but I would really hate to think that YouTube, that they're not available there, but you know, it might be possible that it's a country they're not available in yet, but I would, I wouldn't think so. So that's a tall, that's kind of a tall slender tree. It's, that's the kind that when we go to cut down a Christmas tree, I should pick, but I never do. Well, I think I do. And we'll have that thing. Lou will cut it down. I think I've told you guys the story before. He'll ha we'll have it cut down and we'll have it baled so that we can transport it home. So baled, they put it through this machine and it brings all the branches upwards and wraps twine all around it. You get it home, you put it in your stand, you cut the twine, poof, your Christmas tree opens back up. And I will tell you what, every year when we get home with that darn tree, Lou cuts that twine and those branches fall open. And I am shocked at how wide the tree grew on the way home because it wasn't that wide when I picked it and it was going to be perfect. And then we get home and it reaches like from wall to wall <laughs> on all four sides. And it's like, I had to have grown three times its size on the way home. And he always tells me it's going to be pretty big. I'm like, no, I won't. And, and you know what? He humors me every single time and he gets it. And we get home and I'm like, must have grown. <laughs> but anyhow, it was a perfect little tree. So we're going to let that do its thing. I'm going to give this just a little, um, Line. Oh, see, I touched that edge. See how I brought that blue over? I'm not going to worry about it. Just work it out. Now it's a shadow. There's my shimmer, and I'll put a little bit of shimmer on a couple of these snowflakes so that it sparkles. You don't have to do this. This would be, very, again, very stylized. Not something you just leave it the way it is, and that's fine. But we will come back. Because, you know, what fun would it be if we didn't splatter? Um, I'm going to paint this to be like 
Christmas star. And I could even come in with the silver. And that will really, that's going to really shine from the sides. Oh, there's Tara. She's on her way home. I hope the concert was wonderful. She had a Christmas concert for one of her children. And hopefully she doesn't mind that I just shared that with the entire world. Sorry, Tara. Hi, Cats Are Picks. Hello, Snow. Uh, Cats Are Picks, I don't know if you see that little gift thing at the top there, but Rob gifted some memberships. And if you have that turned on for the channel, you click on that green bubble at the top that shows Rob a gift in the number 20, you can probably claim a membership. Again, when you guys see those, um, do not feel like if I click that, I'm going to automatically be renewed a membership I don't want. You are not. If you do nothing, it just goes away at the end of the month. It expires and goes away. It charges you nothing. Nothing happens. If you decide, hey, I enjoyed like playing with all the emotes in the chat and, um, you know, the perks and stuff like that, that I get with, from the channel and you want to continue, then you would just click join and then you would set up whatever level you want. So by accepting a gifted membership, it does not auto renew. It does not charge you anything. So I encourage you, uh, if you have considered or wanted to see what is this all about, uh, go ahead and click on that. I do posts sometimes. Um, and that is, I'm just going to pull some of this down. Like the tree is giving a little shadow on the snow here, right? So we got the Christmas star behind there. So it's casting a little bit of shadow. How's that? All right. I'm going to have to hit this with the dryer because that's not quite dry enough. We will put some snow on it. And look at that. Within an hour, we've got two almost completely done. Please let me know if the dryer is too loud and um, I can mute. I can mute the mic while I do this part. I'm just tipping it so that I can see. You see there's like a little wet spot here. Just trying to make sure that I get the surface pretty much dry. There we go. Uh, it didn't, did it, we had a flurry. We had like a little snow flurry earlier, but nothing that, nothing that did anything. Um. Okay, let's see. So see, look at that shimmer. See the shimmer in the snow? And if you've seen snow, sometimes when it's really cold and the moon is full, it'll sparkle just like that even at nighttime. So gorgeous. I love adding a little, a little sparkle to the snow. So now we're going back to the Dr. Peach Martin's Bleed Proof White. I'm just going to switch this out. And I will be using... And again, this is just a sponge. You could just get a normal sponge like you use in your kitchen. It works wonderful. You'd want it completely dry because it's going to really absorb any excess water out of your brush like really quick. And we're going to take the Dr. Ph. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And just lay in some snow. So I went over the technique last time, but I'm trying to stick to the tops of my branches that I painted or what will become all the tops of the branches that I painted. I make sure that I have some coming towards me. I try my best not to create road pattern, you know, line patterns where you can actually see um, it coming out and I always try to leave some of the dark 
I want you to be able to throw them too, Starving. I am like so bummed that, and I don't know who I can reach out and find out. Like, why is it that you can't get them? Because I'm going to have to look and see if I have a contact for you two. That's really not the way I wanted that. So I'm just going to take, now if you get one that is not the way you want, like that went upwards and I don't want them to go upwards. I'm going to press straight down, lift straight up to remove that. I don't want to wipe. I just want to press straight down, lift straight up. Oh, and there's Rob. Splat. And he's throwing a snowball back. And if you do not know what I'm talking about, you have to be seeing, if you're watching this on the replay going, what on earth? In the chat, we have, uh, there goes, uh, at Tara. Oh, shots fired. Rob is actually tagging that it's Tara he's throwing the snowball at. Uh, and the reindeer well, there's a reindeer that is like sticking its tongue out, like antagonizing you to try to throw a snowball at them. Yeah, there's one of those this week too. Because would a snowball fight be fun if you couldn't antagonize your opponents? I just picture the reindeer like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> if he could make sound, that's the sound that he'd be making in my world anyways. So I'm just tapping on the tops, leaving some dark space, right? Because we can see inside our tree. If you are a member or a patron on the creator tier or above tomorrow, and I have to reach out to my special guest and get, get them the link. But tomorrow is our holiday get together. We get together, depending on which tier you're on, either once a quarter or once a month. And I have a Zoom call. <clears throat> and on the Zoom call, you can connect with me and you see what I'm working on. Sometimes we work on the same projects. Sometimes we all just kind of work on whatever we need to be working on at the time. And um, yeah, I think I might add a little bit of white to my star. So I'm just gonna go very, I'm using just the point here, just to kind of emphasize that that's what this is. Doing very, I can't believe, I don't want to speak too soon because I didn't put my glasses on, but yet I still got some very thin, very thin marks. There we go. It's our Christmas star. <clears throat> um, so yeah, Cat's Art Picks, I am using Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. That is what I am doing the um, snow on my tree. And you guys see how the glare has gone away? Like we're not getting so much glare because it's almost dark here now. It's almost completely dark. Like sun is definitely down. So that little, in that first hour when we start streaming, it's like the lights are just driving me crazy. Okay, so I'm going to let this layer dry. And while I'm using the Bleed Proof White, I'm going to bring back that first one because I told you when we do this, so you see how in here, those have turned like light blue. And that's fine. It's perfect. Because now when we come back over top, now, now we need the glasses. Okay, so now when we come back over the top, I'm going to focus near the ends. I'm not going to worry so much. Let me see if I can do this up close. Ready? I'm not going to worry so much about up in here. I'm going to leave that and I'm going to put more white on the end because it gets darker as it goes towards the center of the tree and it just looks more realistic when you're done with it. So I do the top and the edges. I almost just put that in the, in the dark color. I'm almost out of my bleed proof white. I'm gonna have to get a little bit more because I promised we would still spatter a little snow because why not? That's fun. 
I get it all over me. I get, I get it everywhere. Now, normally when I'm doing this, I will actually do this um, in multiple layers. So I'll put this on, let it dry. If it still starts to bleed through, I'll put more on, but I'll do even further out. So just closer to the top edge or closer to the top edge of that section of the white or further out on the tips. Because every time I do it, it adds more dimension. Like see here, we're going more inside the tree because it is whiter and brighter out here where it's catching the light. And then back in here, it gets dimmer. And Rob has gifted 10 more memberships. You do not have to do that, but I thank you so much. And on behalf of all of the audience members who will receive those, thank you so much. So if you don't have it, click right now in the chat, um, click it and you should be able to grab one. So if you don't have one, George Pencil Art, uh, Cat's Art Picks, you can click that and it might ask you, do you want to turn on gifted memberships uh, for this channel? And you just say yes. Again, it will never auto renew. It will never try to charge you anything. It's just a gift. And what a season to be gifting. And Rob has been wonderful. It's probably like the number one supporter of my, of my channel. And, uh, and Rob says, yes, I do have to do it so I can have a snowball fight. <laughs> he wants people to um, have a snowball fight with him in the chat. All right. So they, and now look at the shimmer. We have all the sparkle on there. And again, that doesn't shed off. Like when I wipe over that, it doesn't shed off. You see my hands, I don't have the glittery sparkle on them. Like if that was glitter that I put on there, oh my gosh. But these Wink of Stella brushes, again, everything is linked in the description. These are wonderful. Your recipients will not like be angry at you for the glitter that will become get everywhere and they will never get rid of until next Christmas when you send them another one. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Anyways. <clears throat> um, I don't know. Michael's should have it. They should have it. Cat's art picks. I know you said you've had, you have problems in your area with delivery before, but yeah, Michael's should have it. And you may find it in other places where they have inks or uh, like the hydrus inks or, or radiance line or stuff like that. You may find it there uh, in that section of the store is where I would, I would think if I had to guess, that's where I would go if I was looking for it locally. But yeah, look at, look at the shimmer. And do you see how we have more depth on our tree now? Because we have darker areas and we have lighter areas. So if you are a patron, um, yeah, you should be receiving stuff in the mail from me. Okay, Joseph is like, shots fired. Three snowballs are flying. The reindeer is sticking his tongue out. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, if you don't have a membership, I, I definitely encourage you to grab one. So see, here are some of the others. Let me just show you. You can see like the variations and I think you can really see it well on this one because we have the darker background. There's darker areas up close where they're towards the center of the tree that I left it dark. And <laughs> Joseph says, you can't hit me. I'm already gone. <laughs> He's changed screen names. Although he doesn't have to change screen names because he can moderate on either one. So the art of Joseph Fincham that's on there now is his channel where he does his YouTube and does his art. That's the one you definitely want to check out. But the link's in the description. So he could be on either his personal or that one. And he has moderating abilities on either. So yeah, this was one of the cards that I did that I absolutely loved this year. Let me share with you how I finished these off. And then I have, I have another card here that's ready to go. I'm going to show you a bonus card. Um, but what I do is I have, I have a stamp that says season's greetings. So I will ink that up and I will just stamp it below. You can see the gold on here, but 
I do it in gold, silver, whatever. Um, Rob says that card, the original card that was going the tall way, that was the card that was your favorite. The one that I actually, this is a copy. This is a printed copy of that card. You're talking about the one that looked like this. And the original, this blue was softer. Oh, it was gorgeous. I was like, I sent that card out and I was like, I can't believe I didn't hold on to that one because I loved, I loved that card. But no, I sent it out. Somebody is going to be receiving that card any day now if they haven't already got it. So there we go. Um, I didn't send out as many cards as Rob did, but I sent out quite a few. Um, oh yeah, cats are picked. So click, scroll up in the chat and you will see his chat that says Rob gifted. I'm like, I, oh, I can't see it in this one. I'm, I have to scroll on the actual YouTube one. You'll scroll up and you'll see the message that says, Rob Younce gifted 10 Clark Fine Art memberships. Click on that and that should um, help you get it. Rob did 90, 90 as a chore. 90 would definitely be a chore. Okay, so let me grab back my other version. And this is, I did it on this one just because I wanted to show you that yes, in fact, we can do it on cotton paper as well. So I'm going to, and this is just going to give me an extra Christmas card to send because I have two left that I had to do. Now I have this one, but I've already, and I say an extra because I already signed the back with the year 2023. Um, and if you missed that earlier when I shared, what I tend to do is on my cards, this is the front. So this would be the back. I sign mine. And this one, I didn't put the 2023, but usually right here, it says the year when I do my signature. Um, oh, great question. So Rob asked, what am I using to paint the dark of the tree? I am using the, I have one sitting right here. So it is one of my, I have the set of 48 and I have the Art Nouveau set. Feliz Navidad to you, Laura Gonzalez. Uh, Laura Gonzalez art popping in the chat. If you, you, there are memberships available. If you want to click on one, just click on one of the gifts at the top of your chat screen. Um, so the blue gray deep from the Genzai Tambi uh, paint. I am loving these. Rob is the one who turned me onto these paints to start with. Like I've seen, I'd seen Lindsay use them. I'd seen other artists using them. And I was like, I don't need another, not another brand, not another set of watercolors. And Rob was actually the one who sent me the Art Nouveau set and was like, no, you have to try these. And I did. And no regrets whatsoever. I love them. You're going to see me use them more, a little bit more in the coming months because I am loving it. And I can't wait to show you. Uh, Diane Anton gave me a wonderful idea for a palette. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. So that's coming that's coming in the new year. Uh, let's, I'm just going to add the extra white to this tree. Although this one covered really well, uh, it didn't bleed out much, not as much as the, um, as they did on the cellulose paper. So the cotton paper kind of pulled that dark color. So yeah, blue, blue, gray, deep Rob is what I'm using for the background and the tree itself. And for anybody else that needs to see this, if you're painting along or you want to paint along, you need to see it one more time. I can do this one more time, but I will not necessarily vocalize the steps. I'll paint through it quickly so that you can see in real time about how long does this process take? It doesn't take long at all. Oh, wonderful. So it's me starving. Testing out membership gifts. I hope you can click on it and accept it. And maybe it would just be because it thinks your other account is a branded account. And that would be a reason why you might not be able to accept them because Joseph, his art of Joseph Fincham is a branded account and can't, um, that. Uh, okay. So starving, uh, not starving. Cat's art pick said, I clicked on the green box that says Rob gifted 10 memberships. Sadly, nothing happened. Did I click the wrong thing? Do you see at the very top of your chat screen, there should be um, a green bubble and it has the 
the bird of prey that Rob has for his icon. And then it has a gift, a uh, picture of a gift, and then a number 20 or a number 10. Click on one of those two and see if that gets you there. I'm just going to put a little bit more shimmer on top of my... And so you have to be careful because this is where the... Uh, it will pick up, it, the Wink of Stella brush will reactivate that white. Um, Cause I've done it on like the white of the tree before to get some shimmer there. And, uh, oh, Rob's throwing snowballs at Art of Joseph Fincham. Oh, and the snowman caught it and the snowman is like breaking apart. I see this, like I haven't seen these before. Like I, I did these, <laughs> these emotes, but I just, Oh, I thought it would be so much fun. We could have so much fun with that. So let me just show you what I mean on the snow. I'll just tap, but I try to do it quickly because it will want to, and I rotate my brush because it's going to want to pick up some of that white. It will reactivate this a little bit and it happens rather quickly. And sometimes I need to wipe it off and then come back in. Because if I touch that, um, when I touch that darker color, it definitely, like, see, it put more darker color, like, in this area. Again, don't let that, don't let that bother you. You have the ability. And now there's, like, a little bit of the shimmer is on the tree. But if you got too much, it just makes some of that look darker. You just come back with your white and brighten up your edges and it actually just helps add depth to your snow. Right? Don't ever let that stuff bother you. I mean, look at that big old blob that we had um, for the falling snow that turned into our Christmas star, right? That could have got you all, all bent out of shape, but yeah, it's definitely not worth it. So I'm gonna show you how fast I can do one of these. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you the um, bonus card. So don't go anywhere. Um, yes. Okay. So Snow asked, that is not a dumb question. If you don't know the answer, then it's not a dumb question. There are others who might not know either, but be too afraid to ask. So thank you for asking. Uh, can I ask, what is a gifted membership? Sorry for the dumb question. So yeah, not a dumb question. A gifted membership is where, in this case, Rob, Rob Younce, uh, he purchased some memberships, a monthly membership, a super fan, which is $2.99. But he purchased, well, he purchased 30 of them this stream and has gifted them to anyone in the chat that um, wants one. If you have, if YouTube didn't give it to you automatically and you want one, I believe you have to have turned on, um, you have to have turned on the ability to like, it, it, you might ask you, do you want to accept gifted memberships in Clark Fine Art? And you would say yes. And then it would, you could collect one. Uh, if you click on my join below this video and see, that will take you to the membership area. See if it's over there where it can say you want to accept gifted memberships, but I'm not sure. Everything that I've read says that if you click on, which they're not there now, that if you clicked on the, yeah, what does that say? No, that's not it. But it says if you click on it when Rob gifts them, that you are able to receive them, receive them. So, and if you do accept a gifted membership, as I said, nothing auto re renews. It does not charge you. It... It's just for a month. And if you don't choose to become a super fan on your own, then it just goes away. And that's it. So you, Snow, yeah, Snow, you have one because your name, your name is green and you have the little icon. So anybody that has the little palette next to their name, if you have a palette beside your name with a little paintbrush, uh, which changes as long, the longer you're a super fan, the color changes. Like Rob is on orange now. It started off like a red shade and it goes through the spectrum till you've been a fan long enough that you have a white palette with all the colors and a paintbrush. 
but that is the badge and you get a badge and you get the ability to use the the icons the special icons that i put out there every week i try to change them every week so that you guys can have fun i mean there was a whole reason of you being a super fan is that you have access to these um custom emotes and the badges that's what a super fan gets you it's just a little bit of support it's like buying me a cup of hot chocolate or a coffee and i appreciate that because i love both hot chocolate and coffee and usually i put hot chocolate in my coffee <laughs> but that's neither here nor there so anyhow <clears throat> oh starting rob is trying to start a snowball fight with snow shots have been fired snowballs are flying so anyhow, this seems to be one that's taking on. I have a few more like for the snowball um, thing and that might continue. But the more members we have, the more spots it opens up for me to do fun emotes that you guys can have fun with during the chat. So while I'm waffling on about something to do with art, you guys can play and have fun. Yeah, by clicking on Rob's green icon, it takes me to uh, become a channel member on YouTube help page. I think I understand now. Okay, perfect. So hopefully, Cats Are Picks, you would be able to collect one and then help all of us understand, like, how did that work? Because, yeah, as far as YouTube tells me, like, people that are here all the time, YouTube will automatically gift it to you if you accept gifted memberships. So I'm doing another one just to show you how quickly I do them when I just go through without talking about the steps. Okay, so you're going to see we're at 426. So you're going to see how quickly I can do this card. Again, this is the Strathmore watercolor card. When I get to the bottom, I just kind of pull a little bit of that blue through and I had something on that card there. All right. I'm going to come through that again because when I went to lift, it's just making a, an odd mark. There we go. Uh, if you don't have a spray bottle, another thing you could do is just take like an old toothbrush and just water and flick like that gently, gently. And that could also give you some snow effect. See, very shiny. It's not time yet. I'm watching my edges. See how my edge is starting to get a little bit of like satin. I want more of this to be a little more satin than gloss. And this is a light one, but I'm going to leave it light. I'm not going to darken it up like the others. Like this one was darker, but I'm not going to darken this one up. So I'm just showing you, you can do this with a light background too. In fact, the first card I did had a lighter background. <laughs> Starving says, I'm back again as me. And so would it still not let you, I'm assuming if it would have let you get one, you'd be throwing snowballs as your alter ego. So yeah i don't know i'll do more research on it for sure um so i well, will definitely do more research and, and tell you now let's just do a couple announcements while i'm going through this because i can talk with that while i work yes no oh yeah christmas love there you go yes and there she goes snow has snow has found and i just said she and i just assumed and i shouldn't do assumptions yep you got it so the snowman that's throwing a snowball Christmas love. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Look at those snowflakes. That was a beautiful spread. See what happens when I'm like not so focused on steps. And I, I, this is where I watch. And as they develop, like if these start to push too big, remember when you use your, look at how beautiful those snowflakes look. I even think that kind of when it's a little lighter like this, they look even better. 
So once they get, like, I don't want it to get much bigger than that. I'm just going to freeze it down. And what did I mean by freezing? What I meant by freeze, and there went my heat tool. What I meant by freezing was watercolor wants to move. Watercolor, like catch my ears and all things weird. Oh, you're welcome. You are welcome for explaining. Rob says they are awesome. So look at those, they look so good. It is not completely dry. That's still a little damp, but that's okay. Watercolor wants to move. If it's wet, it's going to keep moving until the moisture is gone and it can't move anymore. So just continuing on with my card, the way I've been doing them. Some in here. Putting in my sparkle. I'm going to catch some of my snowflakes. And this helps me keep it random because I go to dots that were already made. And then I just kind of look from the side and realize like, oh, you don't really have one here. So I'll add them in. So I don't have any areas that are forgotten or left out just to help some sparkle on my snow that's falling. I put one there, but my tree is going to go there. So that doesn't really matter. Okay. Oh yeah. And uh, there's the scary, like the scary face. So I was like, ah, like one's coming. <laughs> All right. Uh, look at me like getting ready with the Dr. PH Martins. It's not time yet. My stuff is backwards. I don't even have a tree to put it on yet. So six minutes, six minutes, we have a snow falling background. That's it, right? That is it. And yeah, Rob, Rob says, missed me as the reindeer with his sticking his tongue out. So again, this time I'm not going to describe what I'm doing. I'm just going to paint it so that you guys can see how quickly this can actually come together. Don't worry if there's some white spaces showing because I'm going to be adding white, right? So that's not a big deal. And I'm just tapping. I said I wasn't going to describe, but it's kind of, it, it's kind of hard. That's been like ingrained in the brain. Talk about what you're doing when you're doing it. I have too much on my brush. So just tapping my Tapping my sponge there to absorb some of that water out. I'm just kind of like pulling out, just pulling out some branches from the center, pulling down. When I do the snow, that's when I define them. I just need the shape. And every now and then you get one tree that you are just like in awe of. That was the tree on my original card. It was, it's still, I think my favorite tree to date that I have painted and like to date in the history of painting trees to date, that one is my favorite. And I didn't save it. Like I didn't keep it. I was like, I wasn't even thinking about that. It's like, no, I'm sending it. Rob has 
Oh, it looks like Rob may have been splattered. Rob says, I'm grabbing my karitake and doing this. I hope you do, because look at that. I mean, we're now, we're almost 10 minutes in. We have a treat. I warped that a little bit. I did my heat a little longer than I normally do. Just gonna come in with my snow. And you're gonna see how I normally do them. Sometimes when you go fast, you get better results because you're not thinking about it so much. And your brain doesn't have time to mess with you. All right, just remember, some have to come towards you. Ooh, that was a lot of paint on my brush. So remember, if you get too much, straight down, straight up. If this gets to something that I didn't like, all I'd have to do is grab my dark color and paint in around it, and it would be fine. But I think this will be just fine on its own. I'm not worried. Can't let it get you down. Right, it's just a piece of paper. I'm not sure if I was covering up because I was haven't even looked up. I'm just trying to painting this as if the cameras weren't on. It's one of these like, how long does it take me? All right, there we go. Now, one of the things that I will do at this point, I said we would, right? I have my sparkle in the background. I have my first layer of white on my tree. This is where I'm just gonna close this up. I don't want it to be drying out. That's why I like to use a palette and I like to keep my lid on that so that my jar itself doesn't dry out. I'm gonna take an old toothbrush. Not your siblings or your husband's or your roommates, an old toothbrush. <laughs> oh, and I'm just, I, I dip the tip of it in some water and I'm just dipping the tip right here in the white and then just pull the finger through and I have found that this I just gently pull back I don't try to like fling it to China I just gently pull back and you see even with that I get snow all over my desk like everywhere okay that's it that's enough the manicure I just had today is now covered in white, but it's water soluble. It's fine. You see how much white? Like, it, yeah, it goes everywhere. But then I'll take my tissue and I'll tap around the outside of the vignette if you're doing this in a vignette. If not, you don't have to worry about it. It just can go to your edges. So I'll just tap and lift up any, and I'm tapping, not wiping, because if I wipe, it'll smear and you'll actually, you'll actually see it. But if you just tap, it tends to disappear. So now... We have the snow in the background. We have some snow in the front. Again, let this dry. Oh, 
Okay. And any areas, once it's dry, like you see how I have, I have darker colors here. I want to brighten up the tips, the top and the tips. And I don't mind a little bit of that darker color showing through because it just helps with the adding depth and dimension. As for the rest of it, it's pretty good. So there we go. And so 40, what is that? 14, 14 minutes. And I was doing some talking and stuff like that. Um, but you can use a, a blow dryer on low, but where did I get this tool? Of course I got it on Amazon. So if you use my Amazon link and just type in heat tool, you're going to see all kinds of ones like this. Uh, mine has a low and a high setting, which I definitely recommend when it has a low and high. So Rob, I will send you a link um, to the one that I have. I know that it works and I know that I like that one. So, and I think it's available in different colors. So if you're not a purple guy, you don't have to worry about it. You probably get it in like black or something. Um, there we go. There you go. Thanks cat's art pick. So you click on Rob's green icon. I'm popping that up on the screen. Oh, so if you're trying to get a gifted membership, click on Rob's green icon, then click allow gifts. And that opens up a page of instructions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So let me show you how I do these now. So it's like this. I would stamp like season's greetings down here if I wanted to. And I'll do that later. I'm not going to bore you with stamping, uh, but I just fold it. I grab my boning tool and... You could use any number of things. Before I got that tool, I used to use a pen and I would just like come down the edge like that with a pen. So you don't have to have a fancy tool. It's just, you know, nice when you have it. There. So see, there we have a little card. Somebody is getting this for Christmas for sure. All right. I promised you a bonus and we have about 20 minutes left. And I think that is just enough time that we could get through this. So I don't have this linked in the description because I'm, um, but I'm going to use some of my Calero. I'm going to use the moon gold and the gold pearl. All you have to do is click any link you want in the description that's from Amazon. And when you go there, type in Calero, C-O-L-I-R-O, -O, metallic paint and you'll see this is the gold inside I have the gold and silver set so let me bring these over because I'm going to end up using those so I just need to these take about they definitely take a good minute or so to activate uh, I'm using my food no suitcase brush pens uh, you have a the blue is the uh, hard tip and the green it, it actually does look green, doesn't it? Uh, I always thought it was black. Now that somebody said it was green, I'm like, I can't unsee it. It's green. Um, so this is the soft one. I'm going to use the hard one because I don't want varying line weights. Okay. Oh yeah. There are still memberships left, Rob. Yes, there are still memberships left. Um, I have not seen all of them taken. So there are, they are out there. All right. You ready? Three squiggly lines. from one side of the paper to the other. That was a little wonky. It doesn't matter. I would have preferred it to be nice and a nice gradual, whoop, but it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to be needing to open my, I'm just going, I'm going to go back over my line with my other one because I think that pen is, I think I'm actually starting to wear that pen out. So let me just go over these lines real quick with this one. Because we definitely want our black lines to show. If 
by leaning my big old head right into the camera up there because I always lean like left and I forget oh you guys are like right there uh, so yeah while we're doing this bonus card let's let's uh, also run through some announcements things that are coming things to look forward to see how it gets see how the line weight got a little wider I was getting a little heavy-handed but it's fine it's gonna look beautiful in the end I'm not worried about it this is so simple I have three brush pens these are watercolor real brush pens I haven't shared these with you guys yet. Um, that's coming. I had to reach out to the company for some information. So it's coming. You'll see it soon. But yeah, I'm not going to go over any of the pros, cons, benefits, anything. These will have their own video. All right. So then once you have three, once you have your squiggly lines, you could do just two if you wanted. You could do three. You could do four. You do you. Okay. Squiggly lines. And then some dots you can do it different ways if you're OCD like me and you're like wait I need red then yellow then blue then green okay take the lids off stick them in your fingers and then just go one after the other yellow blue green. Okay. In the beginning, if you're a patron and you hung out with me in November, you've seen this because I did this on Zoom. And when I first did it, I thought, oh, that just looks horrible, right? You could do this with kids. This would be a fun activity if you had some little ones. Right? Because it's just dots. You're just, look, I'm just putting dots. Don't be like too fussy about it. I'm just spacing them out. And I just need to move that so I can move quicker. I want to move faster. If you want them evenly spaced, this is a good way to do it. Pick the colors the way that you want them to go, like the order you want them to be in. And just go right down each line and do your colors. Okay, right? I'm gonna start again. Oh no, starting to say there's an unbelievable smell coming from the backyard. You got they're working on the pipes. Like, please don't break any sewer lines. Unless they're repairing them and then, you know, once they dig them up, yikes. All right? You just can keep going down your lines. Wait till you see how this comes together because this goes from looking like mm, not so great little blobs on a line to something that I think looks pretty darn good. And they start off this way. And they just get better. It's, I think, the next two steps that really make it. In my opinion, you guys will have to let me know what you think in the comments. But now see here, like the next one is red. It kind of overlaps with that. I can either overlap or I can just kind of skip and go next to it. Doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, exactly, George. So if you if your um, screen name is a branded account, then you cannot you cannot get gifted memberships. And I don't know why they do that. Like so many of us, we're YouTubers, but we like to support other channels I would have no problem with somebody with a branded account receiving a gifted membership nor do I think Rob who gifted it would have a problem with that it's we if we're hanging out in another um creator's chat it's because we're trying to support that creator 
And YouTube, if you're listening, why can't you open that up to branded or otherwise? I don't, I don't know. I'm sure they have their reasons. It's probably because, well, I don't even know. I don't want to speculate. Right, so see, I just continue to go around. We're almost done this part. This is the most, this is like the most boring, I promise. It gets better from here. I'm gonna kind of let this one go right next to that so that I can space that a little. Yep. And I have a yellow next to yellow, but I'm not gonna worry about it because that's just the way the lights, that's just the way they fell. Right? See, I told you, I just, it slipped. If you didn't know, now you do what we're making. And then when I get there, that's the last one. Okay, now, right, I have a bunch of just sloppy blobs on paper. Cap my little markers there. I'm done with those. Now I'm going to come back to my Funosuke uh, brush pen. And... Here we go. I'm going to do a little square and draw the shape of a light. I'm not worried if the color extends beyond my little square. It's just going to look like that light is glowing. And the next step is what really makes this card shine. So just making my little squares, right? Doing the shape of the lights. Again, don't worry about being like that your color has to be inside the line. Like see my yellow right there, my yellow went outside the line. Okay. Don't worry about it. It's, it's fine. See, Joseph, I was thinking that when I was speculating, which again, I shouldn't do, I was thinking because branded accounts, like you can't assign a card for charges specifically to a branded account. Therefore, they don't do gifted ones to that because you could never turn. I mean, the whole point is to have some of those gifted turn into memberships that stay and that would just be wonderful. And, and I definitely invite you all to, you know, make that a regular thing if that's something that you want to do. Um, that is the point, right? To grow the audience here. But that said, I would guess that's why a branded account can't claim a gift. If, if I had to, if I had to guess, but again, that's only speculation. That's not fact. I have no idea if that's correct or not. Oh, I think that one was supposed to connect here, but that's fine. It connects there now. And this, I had, I did a bunch of these. Um, this was one of the cards that I did as a repeat, this one and the one we just painted earlier, I did as repeats because I could do them relatively quickly. I mean, how long does it take to do a bunch of little blobs, right? Now we will be done on time today. That is how conf I am very confident, very, very confident. Then I come back and I'm going to take my moon gold and I think that's probably the one I'll use I won't use the girl gold pearl unless I have to embellish my stamp but so I take the moon gold you guys can't see it sorry so this one right and then I just go on my yellow 
I give more on the yellow and I just do a little little line for a highlight on my colors. Just a one little line to highlight and you see like now it's starting to go red. I have to rinse sometimes in between because it picks up, it activates and picks up that color, right? Because I have a wet brush, but these are very opaque, so it's fine. You could even do all your yellows first. I just painted over my line there. All I have to do is come back when that's dry with my liner and I touch it again. So I just put in, yeah, I could not put in yellow and just paint gold in, but some of the yellow shines through. So they look brighter and that's why I do it that way. So now I'm just with the very point of my brush, I am going to just a quick highlight. I'm just picking one side and putting a quick little highlight on them. All right, let's real quick, as I was, I started to do like some announcements a couple of times, but uh, we will have one more stream before the end of the year. So next week I will be streaming next week, which is, the last Thursday before Christmas, but the week that is between Christmas and New Year's, um, New Year's Eve is actually mine and Lou's wedding anniversary. So I like to take the week that's in between Christmas and New Year's off just for family time. Usually I do Thanksgiving week and the week in between Christmas. Those are like my definite, you can count on, I'm going to have some downtime. Um, will I have a video out? I don't know. It depends on how productive this next week is, but I will not be live. So next week, yes, I will see you live. The week after that, I will not. And then I will be, be back in January. So what do I do during that week that I'm off? This year I have planned to, um, I'm working on a new camera, a new camera angle so that my hand's not blocking what you're seeing. So I'm really trying to focus on that. So now I'm taking my little gold stamp pad, my season's greetings, and I'm going to stamp this up. Apparently I can't stamp and talk at the same time. Sorry. <laughs> Get that all inked up. And those of you who are stampers, if you're seeing what I was doing and you're cringing, like, I'm sorry. It's just, I'm not a stamper. And I love that you can see through because you can position it. And I just get that pushed. Wow, that's crazy starving artist collective. Hopefully they, I wish Google would just open it up to that. Now look at, see, so we have there, see the sparkle, see the metallic, the metallic just, it makes the lights look like they are on, they're lit up. And again, I would have preferred that that was like not so wonky as I did that line, but it's fine. String lights are messed up, right? That's usually every year. How much time do you spend untangling lights? Me, none. Because when I use my art, unless I have a real tree, then I have to use the lights. Otherwise, my artificial tree just pops together and plugs in and it's great. So yeah, and this sparkles on the season's greetings. Now, if I, if that stamp didn't come out so great, I would just go into my gold pearl and I would hand letter over that. Um, but yeah, so there's another card idea and we can just take that. And so when I do the season's greetings on that other, the blue card, I use silver. But something that when you start looks like, oh, I don't think this is something I'm going to want to gift to somebody. By the time you're done and you add the little metallic embellishment, it actually looks really nice. And I think the season's greetings just like pulls it all together. And you could, you could hand letter it. Um, I plan on practicing some hand lettering to try to get better. So what do you guys think? Those were... To, I hope that you found that that was, in fact, the easiest way to do falling snow uh, in a background. Because look how simple. And look at that. 
And we did, we did three today. So we did that one and you see how it's lighter, right? We have three stages of this because we, it actually came out. This one was the darkest. So let me see if I can get these all set up here. That one was, I'm going to zoom back out so that you can see because you should be able to see all of these on this. We zoomed in earlier. I just have to adjust as I go. Okay. So you see how it looks on, it's kind of dark, kind of medium, lighter. The effect still works. Definitely still works. There was our extra card. So the strand light cards, it isn't, it, it's so simple. And if you have them, you could even use, if you had a metallic pen um, versus the paint, uh, you could use a metallic pen to do that. And you could do, use a metallic pen and write season's greetings or Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or whatever your greeting or sentiment of choice is. I have little sentiments that I just stamp inside and yeah, I sign the back. That simple. But this technique, was that the easiest technique you've seen for painting falling snow? I hope so. Um, it is super easy. It works on cotton. It works on cellulose. The only thing that might affect it, um, you know, not make it so it's not working is again, if you didn't go uh, wet into wet, if you perhaps used a different pigment that didn't want to move so well in the water. Um, but if that were the case, I would just suggest try, try another blue, try a different blue pigment and, um, it should work fine. You can do this, any color, monochromatic, anything that you want. Uh, you could do it just neutral tint. So it was like a gray sky. Um, they'd look pretty realistic to like a snowy, a snowy sky. Don't worry if your wash is not smooth and even it may look like there's some clouds in the sky. Just let it happen. Um, but you definitely need a, one that will spritz water out and let it fall down on. You don't want to spray like, you don't want to spray like this down on because that might be too big of water drops hitting it that way. But when you spray like this and you spray out and it falls down on top of it, it just gives it a nice softer effect and you get what look like snowflakes. Uh, you could do this. If you let this dry, I showed you how to go through the stages and when it gets to matte, if this was matte and then you did it, you'd have smaller dots that would stay like this card is a good, this one was a really good example. Let me move these out of here. <clears throat> you see how we got a lot of little just dots. It would make a beautiful starry sky and you just want to wait it's just all in water control. You want to wait till that's a little bit more matte and then it's not going to move as much. The shinier it is, the more it's going to move. So just remember that. Uh, and practice, practice at different stages. What you think is shiny, what you think is like a satin sheen and what you think is a matte and see how much it moves. That's what's going to really help you get this technique down. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed that. No stream next week. Definitely check out the moderator's channels. Huge thank you to Rob for all the gifted memberships. I will have a uh, new, okay. Rob says, I'm really going to do this tonight. I want to see it tomorrow. Like I want to see it tomorrow when we, when we hang out. And what I'm talking about is our, uh, Christmas holiday gathering and it is for all patrons who are creator membership level, uh, patrons and members here on YouTube. If you are a creator member or higher, you have access to the, um, I'm calling it my first annual Christmas party because it's the last, it's the last one of the year. So it's like holiday celebration. We don't do the same stuff that we normally do. Uh, we're going to just hang out. We're going to bring a cup of Christmas cheer. I challenge you all to show up in your best 
or worst, I don't know, ugly Christmas sweaters, beautiful Christmas sweaters, your Christmas sweaters, your Christmas t-shirts, your Christmassy top attire. Um, and maybe we'll have like an ugly sweater contest and we'll see. And perhaps, uh, our special guest, I have a special guest this month. First time I've ever had a special guest. Uh, so maybe we can get our special guest to, to pick a winner. Um, but yeah, so I want to see that tomorrow. And if you want to join us, we do this on zoom. It's not too late to join us. All you have to do is become a member, click join below, become a member that is, uh, the creator creator tier or higher, you always will have as a creator member, it's quarterly, but you will always have the last one of the year. You will always have the Christmas special because I think everybody that's at that point should be involved. So yeah, special guest Rob says, Ooh, who can it be? I'm not telling you're going to have to show up tomorrow and find out, <laughs> but yeah. So anyhow, thank you all so much for joining. There's still so many people sitting here watching and so much so yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I really do appreciate you hanging out and watching. If you're watching this on the replay and you're still watching right now, thank you so much. Um, drop reindeer in the comments below. So I know you were here till the end. Just write reindeer in the comments, uh, especially if you're here on the replay. And I'm going to know. I have my reindeer ears on today. Drop reindeer in the comments. And I'm going to know you did that. And I appreciate you. Um, yeah. I had fun. I can smell my prime rib, so I'm going to get going, but thanks for staying and hanging out. Check out the moderator's channels. Links to everything is in the description. You guys are the best. Please, if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button. We're so close to the first thousand. That is our goal to hit that first thousand. So yeah. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you. That is like, that's one of the best ways you can support the channel, any channel, any creator here on YouTube, like, and subscribe like their videos. It helps it get shown to more people. Subscribe to their channel and help them grow. And it shows your support. And thank you all for supporting me. Have a Merry Christmas. Well, I'm going to see you one more time before Christmas. So I'll save that for next week, but bye-bye everybody. Have a good night. We will see, see that. I never, I, I always forget to come up with the Hey, like and subscribe and, and share because I'm too busy painting. And uh, thank you to patrons and members. Yes, thank you all. And I'll pop another video up. It's going to be over here uh, for those of you watching on the replay that you might like to watch next. So bye bye, everybody. And uh, I will see you next time. There it comes that one right there. Bye, guys.